Hi, good evening. Welcome to our Fighter Fit program for this Tuesday evening. Uh, we are going to continue to work on our cardio, our strength, our coordination, our balance, uh, and a bunch of different work while we are all sort of stuck inside and without as much opportunity to go train as we would hope for. So let's get working together uh, and let's start out just by loosening up some of the joints in the body. So we're just going to let the head rise and fall. And ear from shoulder to shoulder. A little bit of a roll with the neck and the front. Good. Let's loosen up the shoulders a bit. Roll them back. And roll those forward. Into the arms. So the arms can circle back. And then we'll change and the arms can circle forward. Bit of a coordination challenge here is we're going to let one arm go forward and the other arm go backwards you're kind of turning through your trunk and then the other way nice one more time the first way and then the second okay shake out the arms a little bit bring an arm across the body a bit of a shoulder stretch and the same on the other side, a bit of a shoulder stretch over the head and pull down. And the same on the other side, over the head and pull down. Take that hand behind the back, we'll give it a bit of a pull. And same on the other side, a bit of a pull. And then just kind of let your arms go loose, warming up the trunk. While we're doing these trunk warm ups, try and keep the knees and the toes facing forward. Same with when we we're doing those those arm circles. We want to keep those knees forward. Okay, a little bit of jiu-jitsu wrist stretching. So we're going to put our fingers into the palm. I'm going to give a bit of a pull. And the same on the other side. Keep those wrists flexible till we can grab and throw each other again. Palm faces in. This is a good way to learn how to do wrist throws as well. So thumb on the back of the knuckle. Fingers wrap around the thumb pad. We're going to push in and twist. That's it. And same on the other side. Thumb on the big knuckle. Fingers wrap. Push in and twist. One more wrist stretch. Thumb down. Thumb on top. Fingers wrap around. In and down. Same on the other side, turn it over, thumb on the top, in and down. Good, and shake it out. This is a shoulder exercise from a system called Bagua, and this is called the teacup exercise. Palm faces up, the palms face up, the palms face up, the palms face up. So it goes in, out, around, and down. You're supposed to really move through the shoulder blades and through the core a bit. Let's do one more repetition as we warm up the joints of the body. Good. One more time, up high and one side. Good. Same with the other, up high and to the other. Let's warm up the hips. We're going to go from the inside to the outside. Good. Inside, outside. Yeah, a couple more. From the outside to the inside. That's it. A couple more. Good. Now we're going to take those hips up towards the shoulder. 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 Good. and then up to your chest. Nice, take the hands behind the head now. We're gonna do that same movement up towards the chest. We're gonna cross and take opposite elbow to knee. That's it. Good. Shake out the legs a little bit. For balance, if you want to use something to help with stability, go ahead. 
we're going to reach back, we're going to get our pant leg or the back of our shoe or the top of the foot. I'm going to pull that in. And same on the other side. Let's give that a bit of a pull in. Good. Shake it out. And warm up your hips one last time. Roll them around. This is a hip rotation, so keep your head fairly still. And then the other way. One more time, the first way. And the second. Good. Let's take that to the knees. So feet together, knees around one way. And knees around the other. One more time, the first way. And the second. And then hang down, stretch down towards your toes. Wake up those hamstrings a little. And come on up. Okay, let's start out tonight. We've been working on some material from uh, Kalari Payat uh, from South India. Now, we're just doing a little bit of this up and down the floor. Uh, when I was there training long, long ago, uh, it would be about 45 minutes of these kind of leg exercises before the teacher would come in the room and start teaching. And they're considered to be paramount to getting the flexibility. Now, these fighters are able to touch their chest with their thigh on each kick. We may not be getting there today. Now, we were talking last week about the idea of pushing up with the ribs. And so at the two peaks of the kick, at the foot up, we're lifting the ribs. And when we're reaching back and kind of arching and bringing this heel towards our bum, we're pushing up slightly too. We were saying last week that you could do this by staying in place, one foot to the other, one foot to the other, one foot to the other. If you have enough room, you can also take a couple of steps, turn around, take a couple of steps with this. You can also do this where you just kind of work one leg for a little while, and then you can do the same other leg for a little while. And this is supposed to be a quad and hamstring stretch and strengthen. You don't want to be snappy with it. You want to kind of let it come up and you're using the hamstring to kind of pull down and then stretch the quad on the way back. We're going to do about a minute's worth of these so you can modify it how you would like. So we're swinging up and back, trying to reach high with the arms. And it's just a good active warm up uh, and flexibility exercise for the quads and the hamstrings. We're just getting started here, so make sure you're not going very, you know, really ballistic with this. Work your way into it, work the warmth in the legs as you go. Got about 30 seconds left. Just a little bit of a warm up for those legs. That's it. If you can, try to get that reach at the top, pushing that rib cage up high. Yeah, let's do two more passes, about another 10 seconds. Yeah, last pass. And shake those out a bit. Okay, let's do a little bit of squatting work. So remember when you're squatting, think about hinging back in your hips. Don't poke your knees out forward in front of your toes. So if you want to get a little bit more workout, remember, I'm just an old guy. You can push this workout a lot harder than I am. You can also roll it back if you need to as well. So we're going to do squats with a bit of a jump. You don't have to. You can go as deep as you can. Don't blow up joints or anything like that. And you can modify as you continue to work. So we're gonna go touch and reach. And if you want to, you're gonna go touch and jump. Touch and jump. That's it. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Good. And shake it out of those legs a little bit. 
Okay, let's go to a lunge. So first lunge we're gonna do, get that heel up, get the back up. If you wanna bring the arms up as well, you can. And then we're gonna reach those hands inside, get our shoulder inside the knee. Good. Let's go to the other side. And sinking in, we're gonna hold just for 10 seconds. So up nice and high. And then bring that uh, those arms inside the knee if you can. A few more seconds. Good. And come on up. Shake out your legs. Okay. Last week we were working on an exercise from the Mai Jung system of kind of pushing and grabbing and twisting. Today, we're gonna to still use the Mai Jung Kung Fu system. We're gonna work on some roundhouse kicks. So the way this roundhouse kick exercise is gonna go, it's gonna go from a crane position or a leg checking position, and then you're gonna to step to the 45 and you're gonna cut low with your shin. You're then gonna to return to the crane and cut 45 and hit with the shin, return to the crane and cut. Now there's some arm work that goes along with this. And the first part of it, and I'll get into the details of it, because a lot of work on coordination in Gung Fu in terms of being able to both be physical, but also have control over what hands open, what hands closed, and things of that sort. To start out, we're gonna use something called a crane hand. This is a low kind of sweeping block. So as we jump through to kick, we're gonna pull across with that other hand. At the same time, what we want to do is bring the other hand up into a bit of a, a posture up here, framing up by the shoulder and head, and we're going to kick. So we're going to go pull down and frame up. We're going to do about a minute of these, and if you want to, again, you can modify. If you've got the room, you can take some steps and kick, and there's a bit of a jump and kick, jump and kick, jump and kick jump and kick and you're getting that kind of torque across the body by pulling that hand back just a little but we don't want to leave this hand out of the fight we don't want to drop it out of the way so the the basic the foundational exercise brings it up into this framework up above uh, on like a roof to the one side of a roof on the body so we go one and then two if you want to jump jump kick return to crane, jump, kick, return. So we've got some, some balance and stability work along with this roundhouse kicking. Yeah. So we've got about another 45 seconds we'll play with here. That's it. Good. So you're landing. Remember when you're doing roundhouse style kicks, you want the weight bearing foot to be facing out to the side, not directly forward, so you're torquing the knee. Good. Let's do two more passes. So jump and kick, jump and kick, jump and kick, jump and kick. Last time through, jump, kick and crane, jump, kick and crane, jump, kick and crane. That's it. Kick and crane. All right, getting things warmed up here. So today we're gonna to spend a bit of extra time on the ground, as well as linking into some of our upright fighting. So let's do a couple of ground exercises, then we'll come to upright, and then we're gonna try and blend them if we've got the time today to do both of those things. So ground exercise to start out with today, what we're gonna do, put the hands down, come into a, a, a push-up position. And what you're gonna do is this, you're gonna go push up. Then what you're going to do is you're gonna slide your legs through 
and you're gonna go to crunch. Good. Then we're gonna sit up. We're gonna bring our legs back. And we're gonna go push up. And then we're gonna step through and go to crunch. Okay, here we go. So one, and slip through and crunch. Slip through and two. Good. Slip through and crunch. Good. Up. Slip through and three. Good. And come through and crunch. Up. Come through. Four. Come through and crunch. And last one. Come through and five. Good. Come through and crunch. Okay, well, we're down here on the ground. Let's work a little bit on arching and strengthen the body from the arch. These are good core skills to have in order to deal with people who want to keep you on the ground. So we're going to bring our feet in close. What we're going to do is this. we're going to go up in the middle, up on one shoulder, up on the other shoulder. Up in the middle, up on one shoulder, up on the other shoulder. Good. One in the middle, one shoulder, and other shoulder. Eight more. So, one, and second side, and here, two, and one shoulder, and other, three, and one shoulder, and the other, four, one shoulder, and the other, five, one shoulder, and the other, six, one shoulder, and the other, seven, almost there, one shoulder, and the other, last one, eight, and one shoulder, and up. Okay, come on up. Let's take 10 seconds here. Catch our breath, and we're going to continue to work on some strength work on the ground. One of the things we got to keep in mind from a self defense perspective is that once somebody brings us to the ground, we're at a disadvantage in terms of them standing and striking and being able to include other people in the attack. We want to make our priority in a self-defense situation about escape, and escape isn't gonna happen on the ground. Do we wanna have good ground skills? Absolutely, because those are what gives us the opportunity to escape. Do we need to be able to move our body mass? Without a doubt. If we can't move our body mass on the ground, we certainly can't take somebody else's pressure and weight on us at the same time. So let's touch base with one of the exercises we were doing last week, and this is one Work on this side first. This is one where we plant the foot in close and we plant the arm in on a bit of a base behind us and we want to be able to lift the body up. So we're going to just do five on each side at the moment. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, five. Then we're going to switch to the other side. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, we're gonna go back to the first side and we're gonna take that drill and we're gonna to start to work on how to bring this leg through the gap between our hand and our foot. So we're gonna lift our hips. What we wanna do is be able to slide the knee underneath us so we can get to a crouch. Now, depending on what's going on, sometimes you'll have this ball of the foot kind of tucked under to help push off. But if your toes are tucked and somebody comes over on top of you, you gotta be careful those don't get crunched. So sometimes you'll do this with the knee down, but you're gonna have to get to that foot down position in order to get up. So let's work on that for a moment. So the exercise is going to be lift, tuck under, hands up. Hands down or one hand down, leg through again. Let's do five of those. So we're gonna go one and down and two, hands up and down 
three and up and down and four and up and down last one five up and through let's work that on the other side so lifting up the body through with the leg up with the hands and feed that leg back through through to the knee and down to the ground two you're gonna do five that's it three four last one here we go and five and come back down okay for the next exercise i'm going to give you a couple of options to work with you can choose to uh let's go through them you can choose to go to the to the knee and push up to a standing position now every part about this is about kind of moving backwards in a way because we're possibly dealing with somebody who wants to use those roundhouse kicks we did earlier to start putting kicks to our body and our head. And so we're trying to make some distance. So the strategy of this technical getup is to be able to move back a little bit at a time. When we're going back down to the ground, we're gonna do it like this. We're gonna to touch the hands. We're gonna lift one hand. And we're gonna come back to our sitting position. Okay, so either right to the knee and standing or the other option is to go up to a squat and up on your feet. You can choose which one. I'm gonna to go to the squat. If you wanna go knee and standing, please do. So here we go, five on a side. One, come up, be ready, and down. Two, come up, be ready, and back through. Here we go from sitting, three, come up, be ready, and back down, four, move up, and back down, last one on this side, and five, come up, and be ready. Okay, let's change it up on the other side of the body, so hands down, foot through the hole, sitting position. You've been caught off guard, you're kind of sit up and sitting up and now you're trying to get up. So foot comes in, base on the, on the hand and the foot, slide the foot through, come up. That's one and down, two, up and be ready and down. Good, three, come up and back down. Four, come up, back down. And five, come up and back down. Good. Okay, a couple seconds. Catch your breath. And let's work on another skill. So one of the skills we worked on, we won't spend too much time with it today, we worked on this last week, is being able to lift your legs up off the floor and hold a bit of a sitting position. Now, I know if you've got carpet and stuff on the floors, it might be tricky, so you can just keep the position. But if you can, try to rotate that position so that you can work on turning and being mobile on the ground. So if someone's in behind you and you want to turn. Now, you could do a game where you sit with your legs down, you rock back, and you turn. You sit, come up turn just ways to work on that core strength turn or you can just keep those legs up just a few seconds longer that's it out up and turn good and down okay a few seconds to catch your breath and we're going to work on kicking from the ground and we touched base with this last week a little bit so this is where we're going to go back to our foot down, hand down position. And we wanna be able to pick up and stomp with our foot. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna play a game of switching sides. Kick, change, kick. Okay, let's give that a try, a few more seconds, just to let that breath catch for a moment. 
slow it down. And same frame, foot and hand. From that frame, stomp and change, stomp and change. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now, sometimes you haven't had a chance to get up to an upright position with the torso, and you find yourself back and press down towards the ground a little bit. Here, you can stomp straight with your heel. You can also push sideways with the foot. So what we're gonna do is go side or heel or one, two, change it over, one, two. Change it over, one, two. Change it over, one, two. Change, one, two, change, one, and two, change, one, two, one more time, each side, heel, side of foot, heel, side of foot. Okay, let's do one more of these leg drills on the ground while we're working our body mass on the ground, getting the strength to be mobile on the ground. So in this case, what we're gonna do, is we're gonna work on the basics of a type of leg takedown. And this is done by kicking one foot under and thinking about using this leg to hook and pull. Well, on the opposite side, we push. So we're gonna roll, we're gonna hook, pull, and push. And the idea is to catch somebody behind their ankle and into their knee in order to knock them backwards. So one on one side, two on the other. One side and other. You're gonna do about five on each side, three, good, other side, pull, push, four, pull, push, that's it, four, pull, push, five, pull, push. Now what you can start thinking about is sliding and catching and pushing as well. So if you want something more active, think about catching with that foot. Okay, let's come on up to standing for now. Good. And you catch your breath. I do it my shoe. Okay, how are we doing here? I got some time to play. So from a standing position, let's start to work a little bit on our upright fighting position that we were last week. So last week, we we're talking about feet wide, feet long, settling in the hips and the knees and sitting inside the base. And that we wanna be able to push with the balls of our feet in order to kind of lighten one foot or lighten the other foot. So last week we were working on a bit of a box exercise. So we went front foot, back foot, back foot, front foot, back foot, front foot, front foot, back foot moving the box over back over back now this exercise is good for learning how to get off the center line so if you think of the wall hanging behind me as my center line that i'm moving off that center line on a 90 degree angle i could move straight back on that center line i could move forward on that center line but we're going to work on the box what we're trying to make sure of is that we're consistent with our feet and the position our feet land in every time we land. So we're gonna go around about five times. One, that's it. Forward, side, back, side, forward, side, back, side, forward, side, back, side, forward, side, back, side, forward. Side, Side, last time around, one, two, three, four, change your lead. So we wanna be able to settle. Remember, if someone's bringing force and energy towards you, you do not wanna raise your center. You wanna be able to settle your center. And the place to settle your center is not in your knees. It's in your hips and in your lower back. Okay, let's try our square. One, two, three, four, 
one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one more time around. One, two, three, four. Okay, let's do another main way of moving in our fighting position as we keep playing here. And this is gonna be a pivot. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use our front foot and we're gonna use our front foot as a pivot point. We're gonna swing our back foot around. Now what you have to watch out for is when that back foot comes around, you don't wanna be crossing your legs over. Every time you stop, you want that same wide settled position. So we're gonna go like this, pivot on the front. One, two, pivot on the front. We're gonna take about three wraps around here. One, that's it. Let's go around the clock. Two, around three, around four. One more time around. One, two, good. Turn and turn, change your foot. So now the back foot's going to be moving. Ready? One, two, three, four. Around again. One, two, three, four. Last time around the clock. One, two, three, four. Good. Okay, let's move towards uh, putting some arms and legs with this. So we're going to start out slow. We're going to start out with a combination called cross hook cross. So the cross is our back arm and where to do a to what we want to get for a good punch is we want to feel like we're pushing from our center through the leg the leg is pushing against the ground and we translate that into our punching hand we want nice straight knuckles and the middle knuckle striking so forward and back so let's just try some crosses we're going to do 10 on each arm one two three four Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Other leg. Right, one. That's a two. So you want to push and twist out. Three, four, good. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good. Okay. Hook. We're talking about a lead arm hook in this case. We can come off the rear arm, we can come off the lead arm. So in this case to do our hook, we're gonna weight our front leg, we're gonna kind of push and twist through the leg, and we're gonna come around. This could be high, this could be body height. You can kind of play the heights. We're gonna do 10 on each arm as well. So we're gonna go one, turn, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, ten. Other leg. Right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Okay. When we're striking, we need to do mass transfers. That's what makes power transfer into the other person is transferring your mass by using your root against the ground and the rotational forces available in the body. What we wanna be able to do is we can make those rotational forces, really the hips are one of the main places. If we want a lot of power, we have to include sitting in the hips and pushing in Tai Chi, they call it opening and closing of the hips. Where you close one side and you open the other, you close one side and you're opening the other. And this creates a twisting. And we want to think of the spine as its rotational axis. So we can then just form where the hands are going and turn the mass. So for our cross hook cross, we're going to be transferring our mass today forward, back. So we're going to go from the back foot to the front, to the back foot to the front. So we're going to go, let's go slow together. Cross, hook, cross. That's it. Cross, sorry, cross, hook, cross. Cross, hook, cross. A couple more. Cross, hook, cross. Shift that weight. That's it. One, two, three. Good. And 
cross, hook, cross. Let's try it on the other leg. We'll just do five here for now. Then we're going to integrate our pivots, and then we're going to integrate our legs. So we're going to go cross, hook, cross. Now, if you want to do that as cross, elbow, cross, you could do that. There's lots of different ways that this translation of energy can be turned into those arms. So five on this side. One, two, three. That's it. Go and cross, hook, cross. Nice. Cross, hook, cross. Good. And cross, hook, cross. Again. Cross, hook, cross. Good. And cross, hook, cross. Good. Last one. Here we go. Cross, hook, cross. Okay. We're going to integrate our pivots. So we're doing a front leg pivot. So we're going to go one, two, hook, three, cross, and pivot. Cross, hook, cross, and pivot. Okay, let's try going all the way around the circle. So that means we'll do four techniques. So one, and pivot. Two, cross, hook, cross, and pivot. Three, cross, hook, cross, and pivot. Four, cross, hook, cross, and pivot. And five, cross, hook, cross. Change, let's pivot on the other leg. Cross, hook, cross, pivot. Cross, hook, cross, pivot. Cross, hook, cross, pivot. Cross, hook, cross, pivot. Last one. Cross, hook, cross. Okay. A couple seconds. Deep breaths. When you find you're out of breath, one of the first things to think about is exhalation, not inhalation. You can start breathing high in the lungs and not really exchange your oxygen enough. So make sure when you're gasping for breath, get some of it out. You'll see some people do different techniques like, got to be careful. You don't want to start to hyperventilate, but we do want to push the breath out. Okay, let's build up a little bit on our upright combo for now. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a roundhouse kick. Now, earlier today, we were doing roundhouse and step back and then step in with the next leg. So we're going to do a similar idea. We're going to go roundhouse, but instead of stepping in and throwing another roundhouse, we're going to step in for our cross hook cross combination. So we're going to go roundhouse, cross hook, cross. Good. And then we have the other leg forward, so we'll take it off the other side. Roundhouse, step in, cross, hook, cross, other leg is forward. So one, roundhouse, cross, hook, cross, good, other leg. Roundhouse, cross, hook, cross, good, moving back. And roundhouse, cross, hook, cross, good, roundhouse, and cross, hook, cross, Roundhouse, cross, hook, cross, and again, roundhouse, and cross, cross, hook, cross, a couple more, let's keep working that, about four more, two on each side, one, two, three, four, you can pick up the pace, nothing's stopping you, roundhouse, cross, hook, cross, good, roundhouse, cross, hook, cross, that's it, two more, roundhouse, cross, hook, cross, last one, roundhouse, cross, hook, and cross. Okay, let's catch our breath. Let's integrate some of the groundwork and some of the upright work because there's a good chance that once you gain your feet, you're gonna be working on your upright skills. So let's work on this exercise that's gonna take us from our belly to our back, to from our ground position to our standing, and through our roundhouse kick, cross hook, cross. Let's see if we can put it all together. So we're gonna to head to the ground. Good. So here's how this exercise is gonna to work today. We're gonna to start out on our bellies. And because this is a workout to me, we're gonna do this. We're gonna go push up, and down. Now, what we're going to do after that is we're going to pull our arms and our knees in. We're going to roll to our back. From here, we're going to plant, kick, 
come up to standing and roundhouse cross hook and cross okay are you ready so let's try it slow one more time and then if you feel like you can start to pick that pace up so we're going to go out push up to our bellies so we're going to pull into turtle we're going to roll onto our backs we're going to come up kick we're going to pull that foot through we're going to go roundhouse cross hook and cross down we go again oh sorry off my shoes go again so back down push up behind your belly turtle roll kick gain your feet and roundhouse cross hook cross I'm sure as lots of you can do this so much smoother than me. I'm just an old guy. Let's do a few more. Ready? And down. One. Belly. Pull in. Turn. Kick. Plant. Gain your feet. Roundhouse. Cross hook. And cross. Good. Here we go. We're going to try and do five of these. Here comes number three. Down. Push up. Lie in your belly. Pull in your hands and feet. Drop a shoulder. Roll to your back. Kick. Kick from the ground. Gain your feet. From your feet. Round house. Cross. Hook. And cross. Good. We got two more to go. Here we go. Down to the ground. And push up. And pull in. Sit to your back. Inside kick. Gain your feet. Round house, cross hook, and cross. We got one more to go, and then we'll stretch out for tonight. So down we go. Step out, push up to your belly, pull in, roll to your back, kick from the ground, come to your feet, round house, cross hook, and cross. Getting up and getting down off the ground is difficult work. Uh, for people who have gone to do jiu-jitsu exams, lots of people say the hardest part of going for the exam is not doing all the techniques and the punches and kicks. It's the amount of times you have to get your mass back up off the ground. If we can't lift our mass off the ground, we are very compromised when we're on the ground. Speaking of being on the ground, Let's head back down to our ground stretches. Last week we were talking about using a bit of a boost. So we were talking about putting cushions or something underneath so that we can raise our hips up to make stretching a little bit easier. Because what we wanna be able to do is gain motion and mobility in our hips. If there's one thing we really do need to take good care of as we age, it's gonna be the health of our hips. Uh, many, many people lose their independence because of falls that turn into hip fractures and things of the sort. So move through the hip, not through the chest. And let's stretch out towards those legs. You can reach in the middle if you want, you can reach to your toes if you want. We've been talking for the last few weeks that we're not trying to force ourselves into the deepest position we can go. We want to progress to that. We're cooling off and we're teaching the muscle groups that it's okay to let go. So if you keep putting them into a traumatic state where you're always forcing the technique, they never really learn to let go a little bit. So take your time and incrementally work your way towards that stretch. Okay, coming on up, we'll turn to one leg and stretch down. Again, find a place where you can feel the stretch is starting and then try to release a little bit. Let's go over to the other leg. So there's no sense in jamming yourself into the stretch. 
take the time with your mind to kind of scan the muscle groups and how they're responding to the stretch. So you can coax them to let go. You can work on aligning in the insides of the body. Good. Let's take this up and over to one side. Trying to keep that as much as you can, that rib cage up towards the ceiling. And then over to the other side. Good. Okay, we're going to finish today with one last stretch. We've been talking about keeping the hips flexible. Uh, this is one I like for doing that. So we're going to cross one foot over top of the other. We're going to reach through the hole between the legs and then grab the knee from the outside. We're going to do the same. I'm going to pull that in. I'm going to hold this for a little while, so keep breathing, keep relaxing, keep trying to feel a sense of release in the muscle groups that we're working on, and then you can kind of draw that stretch a little bit deeper if you'd like. But wait for that sense of release before you try and deepen the stretch. Okay, we'll finish off on the other side, bring that other leg through, and pull. Good. We're going to go about another 10 seconds here. Keep on breathing. Pay attention to where the tightness is building up and see if you can coax a sense of release from that area. Okay, let that go. One last time. Plant the hands. Come back, get up on your feet. And I'd like to thank you for joining today. Hope you got a good workout. Uh, let's meet up again next week and let's keep ourselves busy and keep ourselves in shape, even though we can't make it to the gym or to the dojo at the moment. All right. Thanks for joining today. We'll see you soon.